It was a cold, moonless night when Sarah's parents left for their long-awaited vacation, leaving her home alone in their creaky old house on Elm Street. She wasn't particularly thrilled about being alone in the house, but being a college student, she thought it was the perfect opportunity to have some peace and quiet to catch up on her studies. As Sarah bid her parents goodbye and watched their car fade into the darkness, she couldn't shake off the feeling of unease that settled over her. The house felt different without their presence, the silence echoing louder than ever. The first night passed uneventfully. Sarah buried herself in her textbooks, trying to distract herself from the eerie stillness of the house. But as the clock struck midnight, strange sounds began to emanate from the depths of the old building. At first, Sarah dismissed them as the house settling, but they grew louder and more distinct. Footsteps echoed in the hallway outside her room, accompanied by the sound of whispering voices. Sarah's heart raced as she cautiously stepped out of her room, her footsteps echoing in the silent house. She searched every corner, but there was no one to be found. Shaken but determined to brush it off as her imagination, Sarah returned to her studies, hoping to exhaust herself enough to sleep through the night. But sleep proved elusive as the sounds persisted, growing more insistent with each passing hour. The following day, Sarah's nerves were frayed, and she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every shadow seemed to conceal something sinister, and every creak of the floorboards made her jump. She tried calling her friends, hoping for some company, but none of them were available. Night fell once again, and Sarah found herself dreading the darkness that enveloped the house. She barricaded herself in her room, clutching a baseball bat for reassurance. But even the flimsy sense of security it provided couldn't quell the rising sense of dread. As the witching hour approached, the temperature in the house plummeted, and Sarah's breath misted in the air. She could hear scratching sounds coming from the walls, as if something was trying to claw its way into the room. Terrified, she huddled under her blankets, praying for the night to end. But the worst was yet to come. In the dead of night, Sarah was jolted awake by the sound of a child's laughter echoing through the house. It was high-pitched and chilling, sending shivers down her spine. She listened in horror as the laughter grew closer, drawing nearer to her room with each passing moment. Frozen with fear, Sarah watched in terror as the doorknob slowly turned, and the door creaked open. A figure stood in the doorway, bathed in the pale moonlight filtering through the window. It was a child, with hollow eyes that seemed to stare into Sarah's very soul. Unable to move or speak, Sarah could only watch as the child stepped into the room, its laughter morphing into a haunting melody that filled the air. It beckoned her with a bony hand, its voice a whisper in the darkness. Come play with us, Sarah, it said, its voice a chilling echo of innocence lost. With a scream, Sarah bolted upright in bed, her heart pounding in her chest. She was bathed in sweat, her bedsheets tangled around her trembling form. It took her a moment to realize that it was all just a nightmare, a product of her overactive imagination. But as she lay there, trying to calm her racing heart, she couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't alone in the house. And as the first light of dawn broke through the window, illuminating the empty room, Sarah knew that she would never be truly alone in the house on Elm Street. The nightmare had shaken Sarah to her core, but as the dawn's light gradually seeped through her window, she tried to convince herself that it was just a figment of her imagination. Yet, the feeling of unease lingered like a dark cloud over her thoughts. With trembling hands, Sarah reached for her phone, hoping to find solace in the comforting voice of a friend. But as she scrolled through her contacts, she realized that it was still too early for anyone to be awake. She was truly alone in the house, with only her fear for company. Determined to shake off the lingering dread, Sarah forced herself to get out of bed and face the day ahead. She splashed cold water on her face, hoping to wash away the remnants of the nightmare that still clung to her mind. But no amount of water could quench the growing sense of foreboding that gnawed at her insides. As she made her way downstairs, the house seemed to loom over her like a silent sentinel, its dark corners whispering secrets that Sarah couldn't decipher. She tried to busy herself with mundane tasks, 
hoping to distract herself from the oppressive atmosphere that pervaded the old building. But every creak of the floorboards, every flicker of movement in the corner of her eye, sent a shiver down her spine. She couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, as if unseen eyes were following her every move. Desperate for a distraction, Sarah decided to venture outside for some fresh air. The sun was shining brightly, casting long shadows across the overgrown lawn. But even in the daylight, the house seemed to exude an aura of malevolence that sent a chill down Sarah's spine. As she wandered aimlessly around the yard, Sarah's thoughts drifted back to the nightmare that had plagued her sleep. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to it than just a trick of her mind. There was something sinister lurking within the walls of the house, something ancient and malevolent that defied explanation. Lost in thought, Sarah failed to notice the figure lurking in the shadows until it was too late. A sudden movement caught her eye, and she turned just in time to see a shadowy figure dart behind the bushes at the edge of the yard. Heart pounding, Sarah's instincts screamed at her to run, to flee from whatever lurked in the darkness. But curiosity got the better of her, and she found herself cautiously edging closer to the bushes, her senses on high alert. With bated breath, Sarah peered into the shadows, her eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of movement. But there was nothing there, just the rustle of leaves in the breeze and the distant hum of traffic. Shaken but determined to prove to herself that she was just being paranoid, Sarah turned to head back inside. But as she did, she caught a glimpse of something glinting in the sunlight amidst the foliage. Curiosity peaked, Sarah reached out and plucked the object from its hiding place. It was a small pendant, intricately carved from what appeared to be bone. The sight of it sent a shiver down her spine, as if the pendant itself exuded an aura of darkness. Unnerved, Sarah quickly pocketed the pendant and hurried back inside, the feeling of being watched more intense than ever. She couldn't shake the feeling that she had stumbled upon something that she was never meant to find, something that had been hidden for a reason. Determined to unravel the mystery of the pendant, Sarah spent the rest of the day researching its origins. But no matter how hard she searched, she couldn't find any information about it. It was as if the pendant didn't exist, as if it had materialized out of thin air. Frustrated and exhausted, Sarah decided to call it a night and try to get some rest. But as she lay in bed, the events of the day replayed in her mind like a never-ending loop, each shadowy figure and whispered voice taunting her from the darkness. Unable to sleep, Sarah tossed and turned, her mind consumed by thoughts of the pendant and the sinister presence that seemed to lurk within the house. And as exhaustion finally claimed her, she drifted into a fitful sleep haunted by dreams of darkness and despair. When Sarah awoke the next morning, she felt as if she hadn't slept at all. Her body ached, and her mind was foggy with exhaustion. But as she stumbled downstairs to make herself a cup of coffee, she was greeted by a sight that made her blood run cold. The pendant lay on the kitchen table, its bone-like surface gleaming in the morning light. Sarah's hands shook as she reached out to touch it, her mind reeling with confusion and fear. How had the pendant ended up here? Had she imagined putting it in her pocket the night before, or had someone, or something, placed it there while she slept? The questions swirled in Sarah's mind, but there were no answers to be found. All she knew was that the pendant was somehow connected to the sinister presence that haunted the house, and that she needed to find out why. Determined to unravel the mystery once and for all, Sarah set out to explore every inch of the old building, searching for clues that might shed light on its dark past. She combed through dusty old books and forgotten relics, piecing together fragments of history in her quest for the truth. But the deeper she delved, the more unsettling things became. Strange symbols adorned the walls, hidden in plain sight amidst peeling wallpaper and cracked plaster. And the whispers that had once seemed like figments of her imagination grew louder and more insistent, as if urging her to uncover secrets that were better left buried. As Sarah delved deeper into the mysteries of the house, she began to uncover fragments of a dark and twisted history. Tales of madness and despair, of lives lost and souls trapped in eternal torment. And at the center of it all was the pendant, 
a sinister artifact that seemed to hold the key to unlocking the house's darkest secrets. But the more she learned, the more Sarah began to realize that some secrets were never meant to be uncovered. That there are things in this world that defy explanation, things that lurk in the shadows waiting to ensnare unwary souls. As the days turned into weeks, Sarah's grip on reality began to slip. The whispers grew louder, the shadows darker, until she could no longer distinguish between what was real and what was merely a trick of her fevered mind. And then, one fateful night, as the moon hung low in the sky and the darkness closed in around her, Sarah made a choice that would seal her fate forever. With the pendant clutched tightly in her hand, she ventured into the heart of the house, determined to confront the darkness once and for all. But what she found there was beyond anything she could have imagined. A realm of nightmares and despair, where the boundary between the living and the dead blurred into nothingness. And in the center of it all stood a figure cloaked in shadow, its eyes gleaming with malevolent intent. With a scream that echoed through the darkness, Sarah unleashed the power of the pendant, banishing the darkness and sealing the house's secrets once and for all. But in doing so, she sacrificed her own sanity, condemned to wander the halls of the empty house on Elm Street for all eternity. And as the years passed and the house fell into ruin, the legend of Sarah and the pendant faded into obscurity, nothing more than a ghost story whispered in the darkness. But for those who dare to venture into the depths of the old building, the echoes of Sarah's scream still linger, a warning of the darkness that lurks within. Years had passed since Sarah's disappearance, and the old house on Elm Street had become little more than a decaying relic of its former self. Ivy crawled up its weathered walls, and the windows stared out like empty eyes onto a world that had long forgotten its existence. But for Alex Carter, a young journalist with a fascination for the supernatural, the house held a fascination that he couldn't ignore. Ever since he had stumbled upon the story of Sarah's disappearance buried deep in the archives of the local newspaper, he had been drawn to the mystery like a moth to a flame. Determined to uncover the truth behind Sarah's disappearance, Alex set out to investigate the abandoned house, armed with nothing but a notebook and a flashlight. The air was heavy with the scent of decay as he stepped over the threshold, the floorboards creaking beneath his feet. As he made his way through the empty rooms, Alex couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Shadows danced in the corners of his vision, and strange whispers echoed through the halls, as if the very walls were alive with secrets. But Alex was undeterred. He had spent years chasing down stories of the supernatural, and he wasn't about to let a few whispers scare him off. With a steely determination, he pressed on, determined to uncover the truth no matter the cost. It wasn't long before Alex stumbled upon a clue that sent shivers down his spine. Tucked away in a forgotten corner of the attic, hidden beneath a layer of dust and cobwebs, he found a small pendant, intricately carved from bone. It was identical to the one that Sarah had been holding in the last photo ever taken of her. With trembling hands, Alex pocketed the pendant and continued his search, his mind racing with possibilities. If Sarah had been in possession of the pendant when she disappeared, then surely it held the key to unlocking the mystery of her fate. As night fell and the moon cast its eerie glow over the abandoned house, Alex found himself drawn back to its decaying halls. Armed with the pendant and a sense of determination, he ventured deeper into the darkness, his footsteps echoing in the silent corridors. The house seemed to come alive at night, its shadows twisting and shifting with a life of their own. But Alex pressed on, guided by a force that he couldn't explain, drawn inexorably towards the heart of the mystery. It wasn't long before he stumbled upon a hidden staircase concealed behind a false wall, its steps descending into the bowels of the earth. With a sense of trepidation, Alex descended into the darkness, the air growing colder with each step. At the bottom of the staircase, he found himself in a vast, cavernous chamber, its walls adorned with strange symbols and arcane markings. In the center of the chamber stood a stone altar, its surface stained with dried blood. With a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach, Alex realized that he had stumbled upon something far more sinister than he had ever imagined. The pendant in his pocket seemed to burn with an otherworldly energy, its presence a tangible reminder of the darkness that lurked within the house. But before he could make sense of what he had discovered, 
a sound echoed through the chamber, sending a chill down Alex's spine. It was a child's laughter, high-pitched and chilling, echoing off the walls like a ghostly refrain. With mounting horror, Alex realized that he was not alone in the chamber. Something was watching him from the shadows, something ancient and malevolent that hungered for his soul. As the laughter grew louder, Alex's heart raced in his chest. He knew that he needed to leave the chamber and escape the darkness that lurked within the house, but something held him rooted to the spot, a sense of curiosity mingled with fear. With trembling hands, he reached into his pocket and pulled out the pendant, its bone-like surface gleaming in the dim light. As he held it aloft, he felt a surge of power coursing through his veins, as if the pendant itself was guiding him towards his destiny. But before he could make sense of what was happening, the shadows coalesced into a twisted, nightmarish form, its eyes gleaming with malevolent intent. It was a specter from the darkest depths of the house's past, a remnant of the darkness that had claimed Sarah so many years ago. With a scream that echoed through the chamber, Alex unleashed the power of the pendant, banishing the specter back into the darkness from whence it came. But even as he did, he knew that the darkness would always linger within the house, a malevolent force waiting to ensnare unwary souls. As he stumbled out of the chamber and into the cold night air, Alex knew that he had uncovered only a fraction of the house's dark secrets. But as he looked up at the moon hanging low in the sky, he knew that he would never forget the haunting echoes of Elm Street, nor the price that had been paid to uncover them.